The show starts by setting the scene. We meet the main protagonist, Charles I, King of England, Scotland and Ireland from 1625 to 1649. He had a great eye for art, as did his missus, Henrietta Maria. Both portraits were painted by this fella, the Flemish artist Anthony van Dyck, who Charles I hired as his court painter, or what we'd call nowadays as his artist in residence. He has two main focuses for his collection. That's Mantania's The Triumph of Caesar, by the way. His first passion was for the German, Flemish and Dutch artists of the Northern Renaissance. Hence, we had this wonder wall of Hans Holbein portraits, at the end of which is this absolute cracker of Robert Cheeseman, the royal falconer. His other great love was the artists of the Italian High Renaissance, people like Bassano, and here, Tintoretto painted this dramatic biblical scene. In just two decades, Charles and Henrietta amass an art collection to rival any court in Europe. But it all came to a very abrupt end when Charles has his head chopped off and Oliver Cromwell flogs the lot. The collection was scattered to the four winds, which is the point of this exhibition. The Royal Academy is uniting for the first time since 1649 as many of those famous artworks as it possibly can, including this hunting portrait of Charles I, which is now owned by the Louvre. In a way, this exhibition is a tragedy, a story of what could have been. Great masterpieces, which were once owned by this country, but are now owned by others. Take this wall of Titians, for example. The one on the left now belongs to the Prado in Madrid, and the other two are the Louvres in Paris. Still, that's the nature of things, I suppose. But this exhibition does make you wonder, what if Charles I hadn't lost his head and continued to collect at the same sort of rate? Britain would own, surely, the greatest collection of Renaissance art in the world. Mind you, he probably would have bankrupted the country. Will Gompertz, BBC News, Royal Academy.